Hey dudes, I recommend you check out this video first for a better explanation on post-production sound. But for now, we're gonna learn the basic tools needed to begin editing sound in Pro Tools. So how do we begin? Well, just like driving a car, I practice a 10 and two position with my left hand on the R and T of the keyboard and my right hand on the mouse. Pushing R will zoom out and pushing T will zoom in. You should see that Pro Tools will zoom wherever your playhead is parked. Also, I like to use a mouse with touch controls so I can scrub left and right, up and down within my session. If you don't have one of these, you can use these controls here. Next on our list is the Smart Tool which allows you to trim, select, and grab. Trim mode is engaged when you hover the mouse over the beginning or the end of a clip. And this allows you to trim or extend the length of a clip. The selector is engaged when you hover the mouse over the top of a clip and it allows you to create a selection. And lastly, the grabber tool is engaged when you hover the mouse over the bottom of a clip and it allows you to grab and move a clip. And if the smart tool is not your style, you can select one tool at a time by clicking on each tool with the mouse or by pressing escape to toggle between all three. Clicking the bar across the top of all three will engage the smart tool again. On the left side of the edit window, you will see audio tracks. And if you would like to make a new audio track, you can go to Track, New, or press Shift, Command, N. Within your audio tracks, you will see audio clips. Here is a clip of me talking that I will place in Dialog Track 1. On each track, you can click the S to solo. Here is a clip of me talking that I will place in Dialog Track 1. Or hit the M to mute. Here is a clip of me talking that I will place in Dialog Track 2. You can also use the hand grabber to select a clip, then press Command plus M, which will mute only that clip. Here is a clip of me talking I will place in Dialog Track 3. Now, some tracks you may want to save for later, and you should not use the mute function for this. Instead, right-click the name of the track and select hide and make inactive. Nice, but um, where did that go? Well, click on this icon on the bottom left and look, here it is. But just remember, always hide your track and make it inactive. Otherwise your track will be hidden, but still playing back. Okay, a couple more things about tracks. You can double click the track name to change it and double click this bar to change the track color. And if you want to get really fancy, you can even go to Pro Tools, Preferences, Display, Default Clip Color Coding, Track Color. And look, it changes all of my clips to match my track colors. So cool, let's make our first edit by creating a fade. Place the playhead at your desired position on a clip and press D on the keyboard to create a fade in that stops at the playhead. Or, place the playhead at your desired position on a clip and press G on the keyboard to create a fade out that begins at the playhead. Lastly, you can create a selection with the selector tool and press F. Now, you can always move a fade with the hand grabber, change the length of a fade with the trim tool, and even hit delete if you no longer want your fade. Okay, let's change settings one more time. I recommend you go to Pro Tools, Preferences, Editing, Fade In, Fade Out, Crossfade. Once you are there, set Fade In to Equal Gain, Fade Out, to equal gain, and crossfade to equal power. This helps keep fades and crossfades smooth 
and less perceivable to the ear. As you can see, a fade in or fade out only works on one singular clip, whereas a crossfade blends two clips together. You can make a selection between two clips that are touching and press F. Okay, we are getting to the end here, and then we'll save the rest for the next video. Pro Tools is packed with keyboard modifiers. Shift is used to select more than one item at a time. So for example, you can click on a track, hold Shift, then select on another track to highlight multiple tracks. You could then move the highlighted tracks around, for example. This is also applicable with other things like selecting multiple clips. Control is often used to keep a clip in sync when dragging from one track to another. To do this, you click on a clip with the grabber tool, let go of the mouse, take a breath, then hold control, click the clip again, and now while still holding control, you will see no matter what I do, the clip retains its original sync and placement. You can even hold control to scrub an audio clip and pretend you're a DJ. Here is a kissery, here is a kissery, here is a kissery, here is a clip of me talking. The Alt Option key sometimes refers to all, so you can do things like select all of your tracks by holding Alt Option and clicking on any track name, or mute all, or solo all. You can even change the view of each track by holding Alt Option, clicking the ruler, and then selecting what size you want to view. Another function of Alt Option is to create a copy of a clip. Use the hand grabber tool to select your clip, let go, hold Alt Option and Control, and look, it copies our clip in sync. Last modifier here. If you make a mistake, boom, Command Z to undo. If you want to make an edit, park your playhead on a clip and boom, Command E to make an edit. Didn't mean to make that edit, select the edit, Boom, Command H to heal. Command C to copy, Command V to paste. And most important of all, Command S to save your session. This is realistically the most common combo I use in Pro Tools, period. I think we did it. And while this is just scratching the surface of the capabilities of Pro Tools, I think you are ready to start editing. I hope you enjoyed yourself and had a little bit of fun. I look forward to seeing you on the next video, and until then, later dudes.